What's up, y'all? Sunday afternoon or Sunday mid morning. Going out here this morning to try to catch some cobias. Um, this is the last weekend before the kids start school. They start school tomorrow. So we figured we'd come out here, do a little cobia fishing. We hadn't been in the last week or maybe two weeks. No, it's been a week. Last uh, week before last, we took my grandson out. He killed, uh, caught his first cobia. And my son, other son, Corey, he caught his biggest cobia. So that was a great weekend there. So now we're going to go out here um, and see when we get on them this morning. Now, what we're going to do is the time of year where we're going to be looking for these fish on the rays. Um, the rays are stacking up in the mouth of the bay and then these channels and the cobias hang on them this time of the year uh, to start moving out of the bay into the ocean ocean front um to the mouth of the bay and they also stack up around the bridge pylons i don't like fishing the bridge pylons especially on the weekend um there's too many people and uh the tide's ripping uh, i just don't have controls up top and my son don't feel comfortable running the boat and plus there's just too many too many idiots riding up and down the bridge um to to make it any fun at all so we're gonna go out here, get in one of these channels, and we're gonna look for rays. This time I'm not looking for bait. I'm not looking for birds diving. Um, I'm not looking for anything but rays. Big schools of rays. I mean, and they don't have to be big schools. You can catch them off single rays. Um, you can catch them off two packs, three packs, or 100 packs of rays. And sometimes you'll see one cobia, two cobia, or 50 cobia this time of the year. So um, I don't think it's 50 cobia ready yet i think you know we might be get lucky and see you know 10 packs or so or you know, we might just see ones and twos i don't know but that's what we're gonna do we're gonna be fishing with live eels today um and trying to make the perfect cast on these fish get in front of the fish um so they don't have to spin just try to reel it to them and let it drop in front of them about five or six feet and if they see it, they're hungry, you're going to know because they're going to take off after it and inhale your eel before it goes out of sight. Um, not all the time. Sometimes they follow it down and you have to, you know, count down and feel on the line, kind of like bass fishing. When you feel that tick, you know he's got it in his mouth. Give him a little bit. Uh, flip your bail over and, and pull back on the rod. You don't set the hook. Uh, we're using, well, I guess we're not really using bait uh, circle hooks. Um after I get the fish on, after I put tension on, I got the fish on, I do give the pole a couple good jerks just to make sure I got the hook set in because the roof of these fish's mouth are super hard and their lips are super hard. So you really want to drive that hook home. I'll show you the hook we use, guys. Basically like a J hook. Yeah, something like a J hook. I think it's called an octopus hook um, and it's an ADOT. So um super sharp gamagatsus they're super super sharp and what we do run a 60 pound uh leader fluorocarbon up to my 50 pound braid and that spider wire uh the blue camo and i tied the fg knot um and it works flawlessly i'll show you the reel we use uh, this year we started using the Tsunamis and it's the model that's the model right there 6,000 and it's uh, what's that say Hunter? Hybrid drag it's a hybrid drag but it's uh, I don't know what that says me either but um super smooth reel show you the rod we use it's a shimano it's this model flip it over show you what size weight we use we use the uh, 50 to 100 power heavy action fast seven foot that's what we use for the old live bait. that's our uh live bait setup for cobias that's my bucktail setup for cobias and I tell you guys, uh, the rod's $130, the reel's $150, bucks, and uh, you catch all the fish you want. And as big as 
they bite your line you can get them in if you do everything right and everything falls in place um nothing fancy nothing super expensive and uh it, it gets the job done so that's our setup we've been using the whole summer that's the setup we used last summer um the only fancy thing is that that knot and the reason we use the fg knot is that thing is super you see how tight that was i mean you can't even tell that thing was twisted together with 60 pound fluoro um it's so smooth and that braid wraps around that uh leader and when you cinch it down it makes i mean it's it's absolutely incredible i believe you could you could lift your truck off the ground with it if you could if your ride could handle it um, and the tighter you pull on that knot, the more pressure that's applied from you and the fish, the tighter that knot gets. It just cinches everything down super tight. And I've never had one of those knots fail on me. Never, never, never. And I've caught, I don't know, 50 fish on one knot and fish anywhere from 30 pounds to 60 pounds. And, you know, we're talking about long drawn out fights um 15 20 30 minute fights on that knot and never the only reason i ever have to cut that knot is if my uh leader gets too short and i have to retie another leader the knot never comes loose it's a kind of a pain in the butt to try to figure out the tie but once you tie it and you get it down it's super fast it's super slick it's uh super efficient and it goes through your guides super super nice you can't even hear it clicking in your guides when you're casting um no hang-ups doesn't catch on your eyes just makes for a real nice uh real nice combination so we're gonna get at it guys show you this is cape henry I believe there's an old war fort over there. Pretty neat place. That is right on the point of where the Chesapeake Bay meets the uh, the ocean. We're right here sitting in the mouth of it. And these fish, this time of the year, come out of the bay and start stacking up here to move out and back down the coast um, for the winter. And I tell you guys, it's fun fishing in the summertime, but if you don't get no hurricanes, and no bad uh, weather in September. September is when you want a cobia fish. Um, it, there's nothing like it. I mean, these fish will almost eat anything. It's like they're going into hibernation mode. Uh, get, they're actually like they're getting ready to go in hibernation mode because they're eating everything that comes across them. They're stacked up on the bait fish. I mean, they're just crushing everything. So, and that's when you see the packs of the 50s the 60s sometimes even a hundred cobias and they're big um and they, you catch them on poppers you catch them on top you catch them on uh live eels live uh perch whatever you throw at them more likely they're gonna bite it it's just a super time to, super fun time to fish so we're gonna get it and uh see what we can get into today and hopefully we'll have something to show you guys Haley, what are you doing down there? Really? Look, <laughs> An acrobatic one. All right. He might not be ready quite yet. Yeah. Lift him up, Haley. All right, guys. So we got another one here. Got Hunter on one now. Check this out. Haley, keep him in the front of the boat. Okay. What you got, Hunter? An old Cobe. Old Cobe. This one might be 40 inches. He's a little bit bigger than the last one. It looks about 40.
All right, guys, how we caught this one? Um, like I said, we're looking for school and rays. And uh, these fish are, are following the rays. This fish was on a single ray, actually. Haley, go ahead and get the net ready. Look, I'll show y'all a ray right here. So see this ray right here? That single ray, not that one, but um, that's what we just caught this fish off of was a single ray just like that. So, all right, Haley, he's gonna swing it in there to you. He ain't quite ready yet. Guys, I'm gonna pan out here and show you. I don't know if you can't, it's hard to see, but there's rays out here in front of us as well. Um, I think this one might go 40. He's playing like a bigger fish because he's staying down more. Right. He's not like jumping all of that and then like all the crazy stuff the little ones do, you know? Go ahead and pump him on up. Guys, I'm just, I'm keeping looking to see if another one pops up. Right All right, got Haley on the net. All right, swinging one in there, Hunter. Lift up, there you go, Haley. Good job, Haley Parker. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I tell you what, no two kids right there. Their official business. You can't mess with them. Uh, very, very lucky to be able to fish with these two guys on the weekends. Um, I'll tell you, man, I'm just here for the gas money. <laughs> so we're going to get back at it, get this fish unhooked, and measure it up, see what it does. Stick around. We'll see if we can stick another one. All right, y'all. We got another one on. This makes the third fish here within probably an hour. Uh, we found some good rays. Haley's on it. Hopefully this will be another keeper for us. Haley got a little pink cushion on. You got your little pink cushion on, Haley. <laughs> All right, guys. This, this is like, oh, here you go. Hunter, spin it, spin it around. Hunter, yeah, there you go. Haley, you gonna be able to handle it? I don't think so. <laughs> All right, guys, we caught this fish swimming off some back of the rays. Um, probably about five rays, and uh, he was just chilling on the back of them, and was able to get the eel out in front of it and uh, come about twenty feet from it and it spun around at eight hunters running the boat he's keeping the boat um the fish on the front of the boat gives Haley more room to work he saw you Haley, then he left all right reel down swing it this way Haley. walk it to the other side of the boat front Keep going. There you go. There you go. All right, reel down. Pump up. There you go. Re reel down, pump up. <laughs> she said she can't. All right, might be coming up. Yep, there he is. All right, Hunter, spin us all the way around. Haley, hang on. You don't let some grippers go. Don't let my fishing pole go. <laughs> It'd be bad days <laughs> All right, guys, it's beautiful out here. You couldn't ask for better conditions today. The sun's out, as you can see behind me, and, and the rays are on the top. So and these fish are stacking up in the mouth of this channel here, of going towards the mouth of the bay to... Uh, stack up and leave for the season I saw a golden one. hey they got the gold you got the golden ticket the golden nugget oh, 
it is a golden ticket, a 40 incher. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That'd be a good golden ticket. <laughs> I think it's just down there. I think it's just slapping him in the gills. All right, Hunter, go ahead. Oh, tail slapping action. The kids go back to school uh, tomorrow. Y'all, so this is their last official summer fun day. Um, well, not really. They still got the weekends, but this is wrapping up their summer vacation from school. So. See if we can get this netted. Yeah. Good job, Hunter Dan. Good job, <laughs> Haley Parker. These guys are something else, man, I tell you. Um, I'm so glad they got involved fishing with me like this. Oh, it, it's, it's a great time. So get this thing unhooked, get it measured, guys, and see what we got. Appreciate you checking it out. Hold on one second. Might be going for some more. What's up, guys? Got Haley Parker bent over up here. Just caught a cobia off some rays. Check this out. Haley, what do you got? A cobia. All right, Hunter, Hunter's Gary net him. Haley, rear down a little bit. And then, oh, he's a, a fast little sucker, ain't he? All right, swinging back around, Haley, and no more reeling. Uh oh, he ain't quite ready. All right, Haley, swinging back around this way. Lift him up, Haley. There you go. Reel in a little bit, Haley. All right. Nice. Back in the boat, Haley. All right, we got that one in. Worked out perfect. Haley flipped the bail when Hunter scooped the uh, Kobe up. Um, that's what you got to do, guys. Get a fish in the net like that. You want to go ahead and um, flip your bail. Release the line so it don't get all tangled up and walk the fish to the back of the boat like they're doing. They're gonna get this thing unhooked and see if we can spot some more on, on some rays. So appreciate it guys, stick with us, see what we can do. What's up guys? Well, we're limited out. It's 11.10, um, the twins put the smack down on them today. They did really good, so um <laughs> everybody's done closed in on us we started out this morning working these rays by ourselves with one other boat and i'll show you now there's boats everywhere um but we're gonna let these guys have at it and see if they can get their limit um we'll go back over towards the ocean front and mess around see if we can uh maybe catch some on some bucktails out of some bait balls if we see some bait balls or maybe uh jig up some spanish mackerel out of some spanish uh schools and then we'll pack it up and uh get home get the boat washed up get ready for work get the kids ready for the first day of their senior year of school and we'll go from there touch back with you guys in a little while guys i want to show y'all something this is sad so the red tide is off the ocean front really bad see if you can see this see how red this water is i mean it goes for a long long ways i know you can't see it too good because all this is red tide and what it i think that's actually a, a porpoise that's killed or a dolphin this stuff sucks the life out of the bay it, i mean it's super sad man um it's where i believe a lot of chemicals run off from farms and agriculture stuff 
does it and also a depletion of oxygen in the water from when it gets real hot i believe i don't know um i think that's what i've heard i'm pretty sure i'm wrong uh somebody knows please let me know uh what the red tide is and how it actually affects i mean what makes the red tide i know what it does here's a good example right here That's super sad, guys. Super sad. I mean, this stuff just absolutely sucks the life out of the water. I don't see no prop marks on this dolphin or anything. This is it's just one of the uh, bad things from the red tide. Absolutely terrible. That's very sad to see. You can see the red water. Red water is everywhere. Not good, guys. We go through this every summer here, um, and it's it's just it's terrible to see sea life like this destroyed. Um, our resources around here already have enough problems with the mega fleet. Um, it actually might be part of that. I don't know, um, but I think it has to do with the red tide. But. Just want to show you this, guys. Um, it's a bad problem we have every year. So, like I said, if y'all know what the red tide, how it actually formulates, um, please drop a comment and let me know. I really like to. Uh, I would really like to know. Thanks, guys. What's up, y'all? Finally got out of the water. Headed back to the house. Um, man, it's hot. You know, real how is how hot it is until you get off the water and back onto the land. Good day today. Have fun with the kids. Um, as always, they just uh, take me along for the gas money, I think, because they can do everything with the boat, operate the boat, drive the boat, catch the fish, unhook the fish, net the fish, um, which is great. I love it. Um, doesn't get no better. I just love going to watch them do what they do. It's a beautiful day today. The wind set up out of the south southeast, five to ten miles an hour, I believe. Water temperature was 81 degrees, and that is on the beach. That's very hot, very hot water temperature. Um, I mean, it's been blistering hot around here this year, so it's not no surprise. And I think that has a little bit to do with the red tide, what we were talking about earlier, but I'm not 100 percent on that. We've had a lot of rain, um, too, the last week, week and a half. So I don't know if the, all the fresh water and real hot temperatures might have something to do with it. I don't know, like I said, but if one of y'all know and you want to drop a comment, let me know. Um, I greatly appreciate it. So we'll get the boat back home, get it all cleaned up, get it ready to go for next weekend if we go. Then we got to go do some uh, stuff to the duck blind and put a tree stand up. Get ready for bow season. Um, bow season is right around the corner, almost a month away. A little more than a month. And early goose season starts, so got a lot coming down the pipe. Uh, we're going to start doing so. We're always doing something, but hunting's going to take over and we'll be all on that until March. March is when snow goose season goes out. Yeah, March. So get the old girl back home, get her cleaned up. Um, if you guys like the video, try, drop a comment, um, like, share. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, just I appreciate you watching the video. You got any insight? Anything that you see, 
or that I've said, please let me know in the comments. Um, like I said in videos before, we're learning. I learn something every time I go fishing, every time I go hunting. Um, I don't know everything. I'm not the best at nothing. So if you see something we did wrong or something I said wrong, let me know. If not, you guys take it easy. Be careful out there.